All the earth shall bow down before you, O God, and shall sing to you, shall sing to your name, O Most High. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Good Shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Melchizedek, king of Salem, and priest of God Most High, met Abraham as he returned from his defeat of the kings and blessed him. And Abraham apportioned to him a tenth of everything. His name first means righteous king, and he was also king of Salem, that is, king of peace. Without father, mother, or ancestry, without beginning of days or end of life, thus made to resemble the Son of God, he remains a priest forever. It is even more obvious if another priest is raised up after the likeness of Melchizedek, who has become so, not by a law expressed in a commandment concerning physical descent, but by the power of a life that cannot be destroyed. For it is testified, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The scepter of your power, the Lord will stretch forth from Zion, rule in the midst of your enemies. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. Yours is princely power in the day of your birth, in holy splendor. Before the day star, like the dew, I have begotten you. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord has sworn, and he will not repent. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. Please stand. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus entered the synagogue. There was a man there who had a withered hand. They watched Jesus closely to see if he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. He said to the man with the withered hand, Come up here before us. Then he said to the Pharisees, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath rather than to do evil, to save life rather than to destroy it? But they remained silent, looking around at them with anger and grieved at their hardness of heart. Jesus said to the man, Stretch out your hand. 
He stretched it out and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately took counsel with the Herodians against him to put him to death. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I invite you right now to place yourself in the scene in this synagogue on the Sabbath. So if you're going to go to church on the Sabbath and as you arrive, you're thinking that it's going to be all about the altar, right? Or all about the lectern, the readings, the prayers that are said. But I think the beautiful notion that we see in this gospel is that Jesus goes into the synagogue and instead of looking this way, he looks around and he notices where someone needs help. He notices someone who probably is insignificant, probably in the corner of the synagogue on that day. But he notices him and he wants to help him and he wants to cure him. So many times we feel like we're wallflowers. We feel we're not, not important. We feel that with our things going on in our life, no one matters or no one cares or we're all on our own. This gospel tells us otherwise. Even though we're only in the third chapter of Mark's gospel and they want to go after Jesus, Jesus still wants to help. He wants to aid. He wants to offer assistance. He wants to offer love. And he notices where no one else notices. And he goes to the depths of whatever's going on in our life. That's the God that we have. Sometimes we have the strength to call out and say, Jesus, help me. Have pity on me. Help me be healed. That's not what happens in this scenario. This man says nothing. Instead, Jesus approaches him, sees where he needs his help, and then he offers that consolation and that cure. And actually, he does it at great risk to himself because he puts his neck out on the line. So we begin a Wednesday morning. All of us have different things going on in our life. And what Jesus will say to us is, come to me. Even if everybody else doesn't care, I care. I care what's going on in your life. I care what's going on with your families. I care even if you don't have the mustering of the strength to ask for that help or that healing. God is there. So let us join in this Mass because every time we gather her Mass, it's like we're at the Sabbath. But instead, one of the things that Jesus wants to do is he wants to heal us. He wants to make us stronger. He wants us to make us whole. So think about what's going on in your life where you need God's help. And you don't have to be a wallflower. You're here before the Lord. Ask him from the depths of what's going on. And just like this gospel, he will help you. Please rise now for the intercessions. Coming together before our merciful Father, let us offer him our prayers and petitions, knowing that Jesus has come as the priest, the one who brings hope, who brings healing, brings salvation, and brings compassion. And let us offer him our prayers. For the church throughout the world, may God grant her fidelity in living as witnesses to Christ, and may we all muster up that strength to serve Jesus, the Most High Priest, and all of the ways we order our lives this day and all the days of our lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the ways that we're shepherds, we take care of people that need us. We look out for our family, our friends, and our businesses, all the people that God has entrusted to our care. We pray for world leaders as well. May the Lord help every one of us serve God's people to lead with compassion and mercy and to look out for those people who who need our help but can't even ask for it, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who struggle, that's all of us, all the ways that we struggle this day when it comes to family, when it comes to friends, when it comes to business, when it comes to school, all those ways that we need God's healing grace. May Christ, the Prince of Peace, guide us in reconciliation, guide us in, in healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community of St. John the 23rd, may the Holy Spirit guide every one of us to be agents of God's healing in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for those who have died. I have a chapel service today for a woman named Karen Miller. I pray for her, her husband, and, and her daughters, and she will rejoin her one daughter who has predeceased her. Pray also for Carol Close, whose funeral is tomorrow morning at 10. We pray for Norman Eberly, whose chapel service will be celebrated on Saturday, who's just really a very active person in our community and our Winchester area. We pray also for our Mass Intention, which is for Lorraine Gantars. We pray for her daughters, which are right here, and uh, pray for the whole family. But for Lorraine and all the faithful departed, may the Lord grant her and all of them peace, and may we meet her again. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those prayers that we voice now in the silence of our hearts. And we make these prayers through the intercession of St. Joseph. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers we offer this day in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Through the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all, his holy church. You have prepared a table before me, and how precious, I'm sorry, grant us, O Lord, we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just to give you thanks and raise to you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation, and having filled her with life by the power of your Spirit, you never cease to her to gather the whole human race into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as a sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord you promised would last for eternity. And so with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, while with all the church as one voice, we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and to always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when is once for the disciples... So now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood 
of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Fathers, we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom we led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you've seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of the church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be united now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and in him, God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not at our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. In our own indirect way, let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We have come to know and to believe in the love that God has for us. Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. It's a reminder, today is Wednesday, Joan. If you could lead the rosary, I'd be grateful. If you'd like to stay and join in the glorious mysteries, it's just wonderful to pray as a community. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.